Rectal cancer accounts for one-third of colorectal cancers, which means almost 10,000 new cases per year in France. The hindgut is terminated by the cloaca, which will form the rectum and the urogenital sinus. During the seventh week, a mesodermal septum, the urorectal septum, grows towards the cloacal membrane, thus separating the cloaca into a ventral and a dorsal portion. The attachment point between the urorectal septum and the cloacal membrane forms the central tendon of the perineum. The cloacal membrane, composed of endoderm and ectoderm only, is located in an ectodermal depression called proctodium. At the eighth week, it degenerates and the cloaca communicates with the outside. In adults, the pectinate line corresponds to the whereabouts of the cloacal membrane and separates the anal canal into two parts. The lower third, whose coating derives from the ectoderm, and the upper two-thirds, whose coating derives from the endoderm. The mesorectum is composed of fat tissue and cell nodes surrounding the rectum. Bounded by the perirectal fascia, it contains the branches of divisions of the vessels and nerves intended to the rectal and lymphatics of the rectum. It is developed in the rear and sides. It originates below the crude sac rectal vesicle in front and directly under the sigmoid mesocolon. The pelvic floor muscles, levator ani and coccygeus, and their fascia represent its lower limit. An envelope rather thin but always individualized surrounds it, the perirectal fascia. Its complete removal is necessary in case of surgically removable rectal cancer. Complete removal of the mesorectum with an unbroken fascia recti reduces the risk of local recurrence. The rectum is the final straight portion of the digestive tract terminating in the anus. The rectum is extraperitoneal, unlike the colon. When empty, the pelvic rectum is flattened backwards. When full, the rectum describes an metallic sinus S-shape, which delimits rectal incisures. They are represented inside the rectum by projections, the three rectal valves. We also note the presence of longitudinal projections originating from the anorectal ring called the anal column. The rectum is vascularized through superior, middle, and lower hemorrhoidal arteries, which are branches of the inferior mesenteric artery, the hypogastric artery, and the internal pudental artery. The venous system in the rect of the rectum is parallel to the arterial system and communicates with the formal venous system and the vena cave system. These are the installations for a combinated abdominal and perineal access. These are the standard installations to do all surgical operations for rectal cancer. The patient is lying down with the pelvis raised by a block. The first position is the gynecological position with the thighs in abduction. The second position is the abdominal position with the thighs flexed or semi-flexed, simply with the legs outspread on the leg warmers. Two types of surgical interventions exist. An anterior resection with an anastomosis and the abdominal perineal amputation with the making of a definitive colostomy. In the top rectum cancer, the excision of the mesorectum is extrafacial, and the section is done 5 cm under the inferior hole of the tumor. In the low rectum cancer, the resection is an extrafacial excision of the entire mesorectum, and the section of the rectum is realized 2 cm under the inferior hole of the tumor. The peritoneum is open from bottom to top. The posterior face of the mesocolon is detached. The section of the splenocolic ligament ends the left colic mobilization. The purpose is to free the entire upstream column, which will be connected below to the anus or the resting rectal stump. The section of the inferior mesenteric vessels allows lymphadenectomy. The lymphadenectomy is the ablation of the lymph nodes of the rectum, where there can be a tumor dissemination. The inferior mesenteric artery is cut close to its aortic origin. The inferior mesenteric vein is cut under the inferior edge of the pancreas. The left superior colic pedicle is linked and sectioned so that the Ryolans arches are preserved. Then we link and section the border tart. The inferior mesenteric vein and artery are linked and cut downstream the birth of the left superior colic artery. A second cut of the inferior mesenteric vein close to it close to its termination permits the move of the superior colic pedicle down. The sigmoid is removed with the rectum and the upper rectum cancer because of the vascularization. We dissect in the retrorectal space, localized between the parietal layer and the visceral layer of the pelvic fascia. The purpose is to mobilize the rectum completely confined by its fatty environment 
without breaking the perirectal fascia, whose integrity provides a carcinologic excision of quality. The anterior incision is done on the ventral versant of the rectal vesicle pouch. The plane of dissection passes forward the rectal vesicle septum until the base of the prostate, where the aponeurosis is sectioned. The entire mesorectum is resected backward. The total mesorectum excision lateral plane passes inside the inferior hypogastric plexus. The expanded one passes outside against the lateral pelvic wall. The incision is done remaining inside the ureter. The peritoneum is incised on the interior bank of the pouch of Douglas. On the relief of the seminal vesicle for men, the incision concave to the back joins on each side of the peritoneum lateral excision. We do a vertical opening, the peritoneum is incised until the pouch of Douglas and then laterally. At that level, the dissection plane separates the visceral layer in front and the periodontal layer behind. The dissection is done between the anterior face of Denon Villiers aponeurosis backwards and the seminal vesicle, then the prostate frontwards. At the base of the prostate, the Denon Villiers aponeurosis is transferly incised from right to left, and then we continue at the contact of the rectum to the floor of the levator muscles. We can see the incision of the anterior rectal layer. The dissection of the lateral ligaments of the rectum allows the isolation, if it exists, of the middle rectal artery. Here we can see the plane of excision of the protectomy. We clamp under the tumor, then we close the rectum with a plier under the clamp. The rectum is sectioned with a scalpel short to the plier, which allows the freedom of the surgical piece. Main functional complications linked to the surgical act. It is essential during the surgery to be careful towards all the pelvic neurovegetative structures to prevent the occurrence of urogenital complications. First of all, you must not bind the inferior mesenteric artery too close from her base of the aorta anterior space to prevent any section of sympathetic fibers. A lesion of the superior hypogastric plexus ahead of the aortic fork during the rectum mobilization will cause a sexual and urinary sympathetic denervation, leading to non-ejaculation, retrograde ejaculation, urinary incontinence, or imperiosity. An excessive upwards tension of the rectum or a posterior dissection can lead to a tear of one or of the two hypogastric nerves and the sympathetic denervation thus. Besides, we need to consider the pelvic splanchnic nerves behind the inferior hypogastric plexus during the lateral ligaments of the rectum's dissection, so we prevent the parasympathetic denervation which would be cause of impotence. A lesion of the sacral splanchnic nerves and of the inferior hypogastric plexus can accompany the lateral ligaments of the rectum dissection. The inferior hypogastric plexus efferent branches are to be respected so there is no mixed denervation, impotence ejaculation, and urinary disorders. Finally, you can take note of the neurovascular bundle's vulnerability in an anterior resection as it contains the cavernous nerves and the prostatic pedicle will also find prostatic and erectile disorders if they are damaged. An accurate identification of the pelvic nerves allows to do the dissection in the ideal plane, the one that separates the visceral and parietal layers, to assure the best urinary and sexual functional results. Nowadays, the total mesorectum resection is the most recommended as it minimizes the complications and local recurrence risks. Then, as a surgical follow-up, a coloscopy will have to be done every three years.